Tell us about Jason Green and uh, what you're doing in the real estate world. How long have you been an agent? Where are you licensed? Why did you get into this uh, crazy uh, business in the first place? Uh, well, my name is Jason Green. Like I said, Chris said, uh, actually, I'm from, from Sumter, South Carolina. Uh, I've been in Charlotte for about 15 years. Uh, me and my wife, uh, Valerie, uh, we're actually in Rock Hill now. So I have my license in North Carolina and uh, we cover North Carolina and South Carolina. She covers North Carolina, South Carolina, but I cover uh, North Carolina right now. And uh, I've been an agent right now, right at, uh, right at a year and a half, right at a year and a half. Year and a half. How long has Valerie been uh, in uh, real she's, estate? Uh, she's been an agent uh, right at like 16 years. So she roped you into this. Yeah, yeah, she wrote me into it right at the right time, right at the right time. (laughs) (laughs) A year and a half, she roped you in during COVID. During COVID. Is what what I'm hearing. Yeah. So how did you navigate that, man? Like, how did you, how did you, because when you, what's crazy now is what agents have had to adjust to from being classified as non-essential workers to all of a sudden being essential to virtual showings and open houses to where we are now. That's a norm for you, yeah. right? That's, yeah. that's, your, that's all you really know outside of the lens of seeing what she's gone through on a daily basis. How'd you do it? How, exactly. how you, how, Cause you, you've been successful with the year and a half that you've been in. Uh, so what, what, what are you doing, man? What, what oh, happened? Man. First, I, I definitely have to give all praise to God for it. Cause I, without him, I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, but it's, it's been a grind. It's been a grind. Uh, actually, I've been just just getting in front of people, trying to get in front of as many people as I can. Uh, just introducing myself, introducing myself, uh, our brand, uh, Carolina Green Realty. Uh, we powered by EXP Realty. Uh, just getting in front of as many people as possible and just introducing myself and finding out whether or not they're looking to buy, sell or they didn't know anyone that's looking. And uh, I've, I've had great, great success with that. I love it. Well, we're definitely going to unpack that in just a bit here. But um, when you're talking about North Carolina and South Carolina, uh, you mentioned Rock Hill, which is for those that might not be familiar with the geographic area right outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. So you got Rock Hill, Fort Mill, Charlotte, and that's and and it's pretty stacked on top of each other. We kind of consider Rock Hill, Fort Mill, New South Charlotte, you know, predominantly. Yeah. So we, we're all kind of in the same neck of the woods. Um, but still, differences in uh, income levels, differences in uh, geographic areas, different state taxes, different contracts, different, different, different. Everything's different in such a small area. So, how are you educating buyers on this, right? How are how are you, maybe Valerie? You know, first of all, I guess do you guys operate kind of as an umbrella, but you're out doing your own thing, she's out doing her own thing, or do you work as a team where maybe you know you're working on certain things and she's working on other parts of that business? How how does that dynamic work, first of all? Uh, pretty much it's it's like she's doing her own thing, I'm doing my own thing, but we come together and help each other collectively as much as possible as much as possible. Yeah. So when you, when you're then dealing with, okay, I'm a year and a half in and I've had the success, right. That, that will uncover in just a bit. What what are you educating clients on right now with things that might impact housing values uh, or other aspects of real estate? Because there's no doubt we get the question of, should I buy now? Is now a good time to buy? Uh, or should I wait? Should I rent? Should I, you know, what, what are those, how are you guiding your clients right now on that? Uh, actually, to be realistic, to be a real, realistic on where they're, where they're at financially and where they want to be, uh, look at it more so towards an investment. Uh, a lot of my clients look, have to look at it as an investment, looking at it more as an investment. Uh, it's not going to be their final home. Uh, the final place that their their dream home. Uh, that's where that's where I'm finding uh, a few of my clients at in a position where they have to look at it in a different aspect, and uh, and they 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 begin to look at it that way and 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 see things a little differently and uh, being more open, being more open and uh, 
open to uh, the areas as well as the size and yep. So I love it. Yeah, just being so. Open. So I think the audience is going to have one question, and that's what type of dog do you have? Oh man, because uh, clearly the mailman or somebody is is driving by, but. What, yeah, what, tell tell us about the dog. What, what's man. the name of the dog? What kind of dog you got? We got to open the world of Jason Green here for a second. Oh, man. That, the one that you're hearing back there now is Primo. Uh, that's a little fireball back there. Uh, that's, 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 that's Val. That's Val. Her, that's her baby right there. That's that's Primo. Uh, we have a dog, Primo and Caesar. Uh, Caesar is a, a Shih Tzu and Primo is a little terrier. And oh he, my goodness! Yeah, he heard he heard a garbage truck out there running by, driving by. I'll do it. Terriers love yeah. that man. Terriers are are wild like that. We, we, I'm a Jack Russell guy. Oh yeah. Uh, we, we we I've had uh, three Jack Jack Russell Terriers, and I mean it is it's incredible. They're wild and energetic, and they'll keep you on your toes every day. So uh, very cool, man. Well, when we talk about uh, what you mentioned, which is looking at it at it as it as an investment, right, is what, how, how are you translating that conversation? Unpack that a little bit more, right? What, when we say investment, right, that, that, that word is so broad. So what are they investing in? How do, how do you mean that? Um, looking at it more uh, from the aspect of uh, them being willing to uh, put a lot into the house, put a lot into it financially upfront, uh, as far as a, uh, because houses right now are extremely high. Uh, so you pretty much looking at it from that standpoint and looking at it as the amount of equity that they can have in the home in the future. And then uh, and pretty much looking, yeah, looking at it as an investment. So when we say equity, right, for somebody that's a home buyer that might not know what that word means, essentially equity is just the amount of home. When you go to buy a home, that's the amount that you own out of the home. The opposite of that is essentially the loan or the amount that the bank or lending company owns uh, as the part of that home ownership. And as you make your mortgage payments on that home, you're building more equity in the home because you're paying off your loan and gaining more ownership in that overall home. Other things that Jason's mentioning as well, when we talk about uh, building equity is appreciation values, meaning typically your home is going to increase in value year over year, which is organically going to build that equity or, or ownership in the home. Meaning when you go and sell the home, that's the part that you're getting when you sell the home. The equity uh, portion is what you're getting. Jason, let me ask you this, man. When you, when you go and you look at a house, okay, with your client for the first time, okay, whether it be maybe they're pre-approved, maybe they're not pre-approved. I don't know which process is uh, in terms of that first house showing, but what does your process look like from the first time you show a house to the time you help that client grab the key towards home ownership? Gotcha. Uh, actually, from the first time when we go first view, view a property, uh, I try to get an idea of the commute. The first home that we look at, try to get an idea whether or not the commute is okay, the location, because that's something that we can't change. That's something that's very, very important is the location uh, that can't be changed. Uh, from that point, uh, we pretty much will we'll look at the appearance of the house, the outside, see whether I try to get a feel for the client to see what the buyer to figure out whether or not the outside is something, try to get the, their style pretty much. Uh, once, I, once I get their style and see whether or not they're interested in actually going into the property, uh, what we'll do is pretty much, I'll give them a rundown of what's going on with, with the property, uh, pretty much give them all of the uh, disclosures, everything that's going on with the property, give them a rundown of the home. And uh, we'll, walk, we'll walk the property uh, inside as well as outside and uh, try to get a feel whether or not he's interested in, they're interested in making an offer on the property. And uh, once, Yep. Once I find out whether or not they're interested, uh, I usually give them a ride home, a ride home to think about it. And then I'll, I'll be on the phone, give them a call, find out the next steps as far as putting an offer. So we'll, we'll start discussing uh, due diligence, earnest money and so forth. So what's the conversation that you have with them around due diligence and earnest money? Because you just mentioned two key words uh, can you break down what those words mean uh, for a home buyer and 
how you're educating them on what the right amount is to put down because everybody's situation is unique, right? But how are we educating? Because the the lack of inventory, we'll call it. And while we're seeing it gradually increase, it feels like this, you know, we're climbing up a well, right? It's like a very steep climb that we've got to go. But when we're seeing this, you know, multiple offers on homes, um, you know, I just got off the phone maybe two minutes before you and I talked, which was, a, a home buyer that was looking at a listing price on on realtor.com and then their realtor educating them on an offer that's 10,000 over that and there was a confusion there of why why would i do that so walk us through that man walk us through uh over asking prices walk us through due diligence earnest money how are you educating your clients? And, and first of all, what is earnest money and due diligence? Okay. First, uh, I'll let the let the, the buyer know up front that that offering price, that uh, the listed price, uh, you really can't expect to pay uh, the listed price in this market right now, right now. Nine times out of 10, if it's not, if it hasn't been on the market for a long time, or it's, it's not too many repairs, things to be done to it, you're, you're going to look, you're going to have to look to pay more than that listed price. Uh, as far as how much over the listed price, it's all dependent upon what you can stand. Uh, that would be that's something that each each buyer is going to have to uh, work within themselves, find out exactly how much they can stand to bid over. Uh, that due diligence, uh, what I what I stress to my clients is uh, that's one of the main main uh, uh, components to a, a, a very competitive offer is the due diligence. That's something that the seller is going to look at. The seller is going to look at the due diligence. Uh, the closing time frame uh, and the offer and the offer. So I pretty much let them know that the due diligence is just what it says. That's the that's the period of time uh, that the the buyer is able to do their due diligence. Uh, it's, it's a period of time that you have the appraisal done, you have the inspection done, and uh, if you're going to walk away from this deal, it's pretty much done during the due diligence period. Uh, but that during with that being said, if you walk away from walk away from that offer during that due diligence period, uh, you will lose the due diligence. Uh, you're given a time frame uh, of due diligence, and if you walk away within that time frame, uh, you will lose that due diligence. So I let them up know up front uh, that that money that they're putting up for their due diligence it can be lost if they decide to walk away or if their finances fall through for whatever reason, whatever reason. But also let them know that. Uh, if they don't walk away from the deal and the finance and everything is fine, that money gets credited towards the purchase of the home. Uh, so that, that's that's very important to the seller, uh, being that they know that if you walk away from whatever reason, uh, that money, they can just pocket that money. You will pretty much lose that that money, that, that cash. And nobody really want to lose money right now. Uh, the earnest money, the earnest money is it's not so important to the seller, but it is in good faith to the seller. Uh, that pretty much that you're interested in the in the in the home. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's an interesting and confusing concept for a home buyer to really wrap their head around because of the use of the word due diligence. Right. There's there's two separate things we're unpacking here, which is a due diligence period and due diligence money or a due diligence fee. Right. Is the due diligence period. Uh, is is really the period what what Jason's talking about, which is getting your appraisal done, getting your inspections done, making sure you have time to renegotiate any of that with the seller. Due diligence fee is this non-refundable uh, money that you're putting up and saying, "I'm okay losing this money if I walk away for any reason." The only time you really can get that back is if the seller walks away. And, and cancels the contract, right? And earnest money, though, is what you can get refunded during the due diligence period if you, uh, if you exit the contract under certain uh, rules and things like that. But so once, once we've gotten through that, Jason, how, how can a buyer, what should they understand when it comes to the, the overall process and, and in terms of inspections, um, I mean, what's that, what's that process look like from contract to close? 
Uh, the main thing is getting under contract. The main thing is getting under contract with uh, with a great lender who could make sure their lend their loan is is, is secured. Uh, so the finance you want to make sure is secured, and then once you're under contract, uh, from that point, uh, it's everything that's behind everything's behind the scenes. Every, a lot of things are behind the scenes, as far as like you mentioned, uh, the inspection, appraisal, and every and so forth. And uh, once that is complete, uh, pretty much uh, what will happen is is 30 days from that around 30 days from that point uh pretty much uh that's when the, that's when the, the client will receive the keys that's the that's the big that's the, that's what everybody's looking for uh that's when they'll pretty much be able to uh say they're homeowners what is that feeling like oh man yeah just to see the smile and uh the energy in people when they become homeowners um that's that's Pretty much everybody's dream is to become a homeowner, but when you actually witness someone else become a homeowner and see the smile on their face and how it affects their lives, their kids' lives, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's incredible. I mean, one of the things we talk about in, uh, in real estate is how, how can we take that and help others based on those experiences, right? Whether it's conversations about how, the, you know, especially you mentioned kids, right? How can we build uh, an understanding around financial preparedness and generational wealth and understanding how these types of things, to your point, saying it's an investment, right? It's an investment in a lot of things, right? It's an investment in uh, creating that wealth and creating that knowledge uh what what is i mean are you having those conversations what what does that look like to ensure that a homeowner is take kind of also taking that next step to educate others based on uh right. your experience because obviously listen i mean you nine times out of ten your business is going to be based off of referrals exactly. right so exactly. only only way to only way to get the referrals to ask for the referral right uh, and and continue to stay top of mind. So, what what do those conversations look like for you? Uh, pretty much, uh, like I said, the main goal is to get them on the contract and get them to the closing table. Uh, once they're to the closing table and, and close, that's when pretty much uh, I'm I'm asking them whether or not they have any are they do they have any family members or friends that are interested in purchasing. And uh, you'd be surprised of the the people the clients that are that actually have someone they know someone in church or one of their friends that they can refer that are looking for a realtor. I love that. So what do you feel like you hear the most, right? From a, from a prospective home buyer. I mean, what's that frequently asked question that you feel like, man, I'm feeling this all the time and you don't mind answering it. Right. right. I mean, that's our job, but what, what is that one or two questions that you say, this is a question I get all the time. This is what you need to know. Does this house have multiple offers? <laughs> you have does, buyers asking that. Yeah. Does this house have multiple offers? Yeah. And uh, nine times out of 10, yes, it does have multiple offers. That's pretty much the way you have to approach any house right now in this market right now. Like it has multiple offers unless it's yeah. been sitting, it's, unless it's been sitting on the market for a while or it's some, some known, some known issues with it. But if you're really, really interested in a property, you have to be aggressive and take that approach. I love it. I love it, man. Well, I want to switch gears a little bit here as well. And I want to get into uh, kind of your journey as a real estate agent and how you can uh, help share some of your success or shed some light on it uh, for somebody that might be following in your footsteps as, as a realtor here. But before we do that, I mentioned pulling a random card out of here. So I'm going to do that now. I've not looked at these cards. Um, and so this is, this is the question here that I'll ask you. If you had to delete all but three apps from your smartphone, which three would you keep? Uh, which three would I keep? I would say uh, I definitely would have to keep MLS. <laughs> okay, yeah, you gotta yeah. be able to look at properties. Yeah, yeah, definitely have to keep MLS. Uh, uh, I would say my my duo, I have to keep my duo uh, to be able to see my family and friends, my daughter, my wife, see my family when 
if I can't see them physically at the time. So I definitely have to keep uh, that app. Okay. Uh, uh, and I would say my my bank app. I would have to keep the bank app. Banking. Yeah, there you go. You don't want to just do that online. You want to do that from the go on your phone. Yeah. I love that. Very cool, man. So let's jump in. Uh, and, and before actually I do that, I've got a question uh, from my seven-year-old, which is uh, he's big into, into playing Mario and Luigi right now. Uh, and so the, the question is, Mario or Luigi, if you got to be one of the brothers, who would it be? I'll, I'll, say, I'll say Super Mario. Super Mario. I'll, I'll definitely Super be Super Mario. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Why him over Luigi? He's taller. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess I just brought up, you know what I'm saying, using Mario, Super Mario. So, yeah. <laughs> there you go, man. I love it. We, we've done just yep. about any of the Somebody Mario games. Blue. Somebody that blue and red. There you go. That's, that's a good good color scheme for sure, man. Um, I love it. I love it. It's it's hard hard to say. Like who? Oftentimes we feel like Luigi's the sidekick anyway. Who wants to be yeah. the sidekick? It's like asking if you want to be Batman or Robin. I mean, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, no offense to somebody that would pick Luigi or, or Robin in these scenarios. So let's talk about realtor and real estate agent. Um, if you're new, you, I mean, you're a year, year and a half into this and, and there's no doubt you've had success here. So if you're going back a year, year and a half, um, what's one thing you're telling yourself? What's something you're telling a new agent that might be uh, getting their license right now that you say, if nothing else, focus on this? What is, what is that? Uh, I would say following up, following up with everybody that you, you meet pretty much. Following up with everybody that you meet that's that's interested in buying, selling, uh, show some type of interest, follow up because you never know whether or not they would be interested in purchasing in the future or they know someone that would be interested. You want to stay top of mind. You want to stay top of mind to, to pretty much everybody that you sell real estate. What's the method of follow up, man? I mean, we've got, you, listen, we've got text messaging. We've got video texting, we've got video email, bulk mail, what I, I mean, fo organic phone calls, face to face, right? I mean, all these different types of ways to follow up and connect with somebody, whether it handwritten notes. I mean, what, what's your process? What, where, where are you going? How are you following up? Uh, me personally, um, I use KV Core. I use KV Core somewhat, that my CRM, but uh, I predominantly just put them on my calendar. Put them on my calendar and 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 just be real intentional and, and following up with them. How often do you use a calendar? Every day. Every day. I what what are what are things? What what are like the most consistent things you make sure are on your calendar every day? Uh, following up, following up with with individuals, following up with clients that I spoke with maybe two weeks ago, two months ago. If I tell them I'm going to call them on on whatever date I have a marked in my calendar and, and I'll give them a call. I love it. So tell me, you, you mentioned the CRM. What's it called again? Uh, CRM, KV Core. KV Core. What, why do you like that one? Uh, actually, I have a drip uh, campaign in KV Core that would actually uh, alert me whenever clients uh, click on certain properties and send them out uh, properties of their interest. And it kind of kind of helped back me up. Kind of help back me up. I don't use it as much as I, I need to or should, and uh, but it's it's definitely definitely useful. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. CRM is the lifeblood of what of what we do <laughs> because it can create some of those reminders on our calendars for us and and allow us to understand how to stay top of mind with with folks. So that's awesome. Um, what are your top lead sources right now? So I mean, because you, you mentioned getting in front of everybody, right? So lead sources, I mean, when, and the reason I ask this question is, I when I hear a new agent and I'm talking to a new agent, it's, do you have a license? Do you have a pulse? Then great, you're qualified to do this job, right? Now, then it comes down to, 
but where, where do I go and get business? Because oftentimes the broker in charge or whoever you're talking to says, work your sphere of influence, work your center of influence, right? Work your, and, and we kind of squash that down into this small group of, of family and friends. And then this kind of pit in our stomach can kind of take over of how do I not alienate my family and friends, but also ask for business. But, and then, we, and then we can kind of start to miss out on other things like expired listings, investors for sale by owners, social networks, builders. I mean, where, what is the source of your business? Where are you getting the majority of your business? Um, maybe the top two or three business, you know, sources, what's your, what's your business makeup right now? Uh, with me, I had to step outside of my sphere of influence. Really, I had, like I said, I had to really get in front of people. Uh, my mentor, he 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 shared a story with me about uh, actually introducing yourself to anybody that's within three feet of you as a realtor. So uh, pretty much, I took that concept and uh, and I hit up grocery stores, I hit up Walmart, the mall. I'm just getting in front of as many people as I can and just introduce myself as a realtor and find out how can I assist them? How can I meet their needs or whether or not they know anyone that's looking? And uh, I sparked a great conversation, makes, met some great people. And uh, that's that's pretty much my main, main lead generator right there. Is going out and just it's networking, just, man. Yeah. I mean, so when you walk into a grocery store or a Walmart, right? What I envision, and, and if you haven't done this, this is, my, this is my little challenge for you. You know, when you go to Lowe's or you go to Home Depot or something like that, and they've always got those vests on, right? The blue vest or whatever. And it, on the back, it's like, ask me for help, right? <laughs> is, is go and invest in one of those. Get the, the same font, ask me for help or whatever. And just start shopping around, looking around. And people come up and ask you like they're looking for blinds or something and then on the front it says i'm a realtor uh -huh. <laughs> <So> yeah <laughs> they'll walk up and be like excuse me sir oh uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> um that's my challenge for you uh -huh. it, but what in the world does that conversation look like because i just I, I mean the way people could respond yeah. in in a real world setting like that when they're there for something in their mind that is completely different. What's that conversation look like? How do you how do you open that conversation? Yeah, first I I, I kind of greet them from a distance because nobody wants with COVID and everything going on. You really don't want anybody up in your face in the grocery store, a stranger. So I kind of greet them from a distance, and uh, once I I make eye contact with them, I, I introduce myself, the company that I work for, and uh, see whether or not they're interested in buying or selling a home or they know anyone that's interested or they're looking to invest. And I try to spark a little conversation. Uh, I would say eight out of 10 people that I speak with is very positive. It's very positive. They, they take my card and uh, pretty much let me know whether or not they're interested or they know anyone. Uh, it's, it's still a very small, small percent of people that pretty much just kind of kind of ignore me and just walk away. No problem. I just keep moving to the next one. So uh, it's, it's, it's just a grind. It's just a grind. Get my face in front of as many people as I can uh, in the real world. I mean, social media, I'm, I'm not real big on social media, but I just try to be upfront and personal with as many people as I can and see how I can assist them. How can I help them? Why did you choose that method? Like what made you think I'm, I'm just going to walk into this store and see what I get out of it. Like what, what came over you that said, or, or is it something from, you know, a past job or, or something that, that led you to say, this is a, this is a smart idea. Uh, I tried the cold calling. I tried other methods of, of, of creating leads for myself. And, uh, and it just wasn't coming quite fast enough. I had some success with it, but it wasn't coming as fast as I wanted. So I, I have to go get it. I really have to go out and, and just get my face in front of as many people. And uh, that's what I, I decided to do. It was just like try to think of places that I find a lot of people at and uh, it just filter through them, just go through them and ask them. That's yeah. incredible, man. I mean, that, that's something game. that it takes a lot of guts to, to yeah. 
stand in front of somebody and feel confident to say, yeah. I'm going to pitch you on something right now. Yeah, I ran into I ran into a, quite a few realtors uh, themselves. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, the response that I get from some of the, some of the uh, fellow realtors is, is crazy. You know what I'm saying? But it's, what's the coolest story you've ever gotten out of this? I mean, by the way, I mean, like what? What's the what what sticks out when you think about doing this uh, all the time? I mean, is there one story that you feel like anytime you can think about going into a store, this just triggers in your mind? What what is that? Uh yeah, actually, uh it was this one, this one female that I met uh in the store out in public. Uh she took my car, she told me that uh she's interested in purchasing a home, and then she said, Hey. Uh, can I have another card? I have a friend that's interested as well. So I gave her another card and uh, I didn't think too much of it. Uh, but then she, uh, her friend called, her friend called and uh, told me where she got the card from. And I assisted her. I, I never met her. I talked to her on the phone uh, maybe twice. Uh, she, she got pre-approved. Uh, she got pre-approved. And then the first home that we went and viewed, it was a new construction. She, she was realistic. Uh, she's very realistic. So I pointed in the direction uh, that I felt that she would have uh, the most success in finding what she's looking for. And uh, we head in that direction. Uh, the first home that we went to, she fell in love with it. We made an offer. Uh, she's under contract. Uh, she's scheduled to close this month. Scheduled to close this month. Uh, the, the, her friend that I gave the card to initially, uh, she called me uh, shortly after she went under, her friend went under contract it was just, it was just crazy. She was just, she just went off. She just went off and was just excited for a friend. And uh, she was looking forward to going through the exact same thing. And, That's uh, incredible. That's so cool, man. So you mentioned not having some success as well. So I want to touch on that uh, because no agent is going to have success doing everything. Right. And, and that's the beauty of this job is you can do it the way that works best for you, but you switched away from, from cold calling. First of all, where did you even find numbers to cold call? And what did that, I mean, what was that process like? Uh, yeah, actually, I used a few uh, Z buyer, used a few lead generation, lead, lead generation sources uh, to cold call. And uh just use uh, some some prior experience uh, just to get just to pick up the call just pick up the phone and just start calling, and uh, I did that for day in and day out for hours. Uh, like I said, I had I gained some traction with it, but not the traction that I expected. And then from sure. that point, that's when I realized that I really have to get in front of people physically. And so when you figured out that that was kind of the method that worked, which was getting in front of people, uh, you know. Personally, you mentioned giving them your card. Are you are you also getting their information um, as well, or, or are you kind of waiting for them to call you? What's that What's that process look like? Uh, pretty much, uh, I have a conversation with them and find out exactly where they're at. If it's somebody that's looking to purchase uh, within the next six eight months, uh, yeah, I, I go ahead and grab their information, get their name, phone number, email, and I go ahead and lock in a time when's best to call them and just stick to it. If they say call them today at six, then I'm calling at six today. And if they say call in six months, I'm calling in six months. So I kind of just follow up with them and uh, find out exactly where they're at. And, and if, if they're looking to purchase in the next six, eight months, I go ahead and get their information. If they're not, I go ahead and, and give them a card and, and have them reach back out to me. So here's what I'm picturing in my head, okay? I'm, I'm going into Target and all of a sudden I hear a voice far away. Hey, <laughs> I'm a realtor. That's not what happens. Yeah. Or it is. No, no, that's not, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. <laughs> so, yeah. so break that portion portion down. Cause if there's a new realtor saying that method sounds like it could really work for me but I just don't know how to open the conversation. Help, help somebody through that today. Uh, first, I, I try to uh, approach them, approach them very respectful, 
very respectful with my arm extended with the card. Let them know I have my picture on my card. I have my mask on. So I'm not trying to disrespect anybody, especially with all that's going on. So I pretty much have my arm extended, give them a card, introduce myself. They look at the card and, and they hear me out. They hear me out. And sometimes we have a little small conversation and they let me know exactly where they're at as far as uh, the, per- the, the process of purchasing a home or whether or not they know anyone that's looking. And it's, it's, it's just been, it's been, it's been amazing feedback. It's made amazing feedback. So you're still fairly direct with it though, right? I mean, you're yeah. going right in with the yeah. card and letting them know what, what the conversation's about. Yeah. So you're not waiting necessarily for them to look at something on the shelf no. and say, Oh, that's a cool toy. My kid likes that toy. Oh, by the way, I'm a realtor. Yeah. I, I, I kind of wait, wait until they finish what they're doing. And then I catch them at that right time and, okay. and present them with the car, present them with the car and, and, and introduce myself. And like I say, eight out of 10 people, they're very, very respectful, very receptive of what I'm, 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 uh, I'm what I'm saying. And, and once it. again, every now and then you have someone that just totally ignore you and walk off. It's no problem. I walk off too. Yeah. So that's pretty much, that's pretty much how I, how I do it. What do you think the one thing a realtor, when they start in this industry, doesn't understand? Mm, it's not going to come to you. It's not going to come to you. You have to go out and get it. You have to go out and get it. And you know, when I say that, go out and get it, you really have to, like I say, pretty much present yourself in, in front of as many people as possible and try to stay on the forefront of their mind as you being, you're a realtor. Whenever they think about, buying or selling your top of mind. I love it. I love it, man. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this up with one more of these questions here. So we'll see, we'll see what we got. All right. And this just helps people get to know who you are and what you like. So this question is, if there was a sandwich named after you, what would be on it? What would be on it? What would be on it? Uh, this may sound nasty to some people, but to me, what would be on it would be turkey, uh, turkey, crab meat, uh, some honey on some honey wheat bread. <laughs> turkey and crab meat on turkey some honey and crab wheat bread. Meat. Yep. Any, any other toppings or anything on it or just turkey and crab meat? Turkey and crab meat. All right. And so are we thinking like, Thanksgiving type turkey, or are we think in like thin. deli sliced? Yeah, like deli sliced thin turkey. Deli sliced thin. Have you? So you've had this? <laughs> no, I haven't had it, but it sounds good to me. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You haven't even had it. You said this is what it's going to be. That's just that's, may that's, try it today, though. <laughs> let's do it, man. Let's do it. I'll, I'll meet you there. Um, well, listen, Jason, I so appreciate your time, man. Thank you for coming. And, um, guys, if you need, uh, a realtor, Jason, how can people get in touch with you best, man? Uh, my number is 704-215-1295. Again, my name is Jason Green. You can also, uh, go to www.carolinagreenrealty.com. Uh, that's green, G-R-E-E-N-E, www.carolinagreenrealty.com. And uh, yeah, you can reach out to me or my wife, Valerie, and uh, we would love to assist you in, uh, in purchasing or selling or investing. I love it, man. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me, Chris. All right. So I'm going to stop it there. Um, I'll edit some of the stuff out. Again, the, the idea is to create some micro content, get it on social media, get people kind of knowing who you are and everything. And then obviously you can post it on your, on your social sites as well. Um, and then I might use some of the other, you know, some of the things you've said in more of a quote form, if that works for you. Is that cool? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I say, I'm not definitely not a camera guy, man. <laughs> if this is right here, oh, it's I, totally, totally new. Well, it's good. I mean, that, and that's important, right? I mean, that's, now, now you got a story to share with other people too. So, yeah. um, I, I appreciate it, man. And, uh, how, how do you feel like it went? You said what now? How do you feel like it went? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it went pretty good. I'm not sure. 
actually. I mean, on your part, you, you definitely did a great job. You did a great job asking me questions. But I mean, as far as as me personally, I'm always going to criticize. Crit, uh, I'm my biggest critic. So I'm always, yeah. We're always our, we're always our biggest critic, man. I mean, that's yeah. something that I, 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 I you, you get to see the the polished result. I, I am the one that has to go through and and watch myself over and over and over and over. That's again. the part I don't like uh, doing right there. <laughs> that's right. So that's why I might use like a service like Fiverr or something like that, and just allow somebody else to edit this um versus me personally doing it <laughs> otherwise i you know i might over criticize my own did, self but did i, did um, I ask you questions and everything pretty much the way oh dude do. yeah it, exactly i mean that and that the idea is they're not they're not really questions so much for me as much as they're for you know potential home buyer potential realtor that's looking to either um get into the real estate business or or a home buyer that's looking to to do that because home buyers they're going to traditionally research the agent. And so I want to tag you in these things. So that way, uh, somebody's maybe researching you, who you are, they're getting a, a little bit of a key insight into what they can expect, right? I mean, what, 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 who you are, what makes you tick, and uh, maybe they want to join you for a turkey and crab meat sandwich, right? I mean, it is, um, it's just, people do business with who they know, like, and trust. Right. And, and when we can break down the walls of uh, just professional, professional, professional and making things feel scary. And like, I'm calling a realtor and this is a salesperson. When we're, when we feel like I'm calling a human being, I just think yeah. there's more that can be transferred there. And then on the agent side of things is I want other agents to watch this and say, you know what? I'm a realtor in the triad. I'm a realtor in Raleigh. I'm a realtor in a different state that says, I don't have the means to drive down there. I'm going to refer it. Who do I want to refer it to? I want to refer it to Jason. Right. And so that's the idea is just how can I help you grow? How can I help you promote yourself that is um, independent of me even? Right. I mean, all, all I've I've always been upfront with my realtor partners is I, I want you to use me. Whether you use me or not, it's it's ideally about how do I help you grow your business? Um, and that's that's the selfless give back that that I have, right? Is just saying, you know what, let me just help promote you and uh, and try and filter as many people or eyeballs to you as possible. So um, I appreciate it, man. Man, I appreciate I appreciate the invite, Chris. I really appreciate that, man. Yes, sir. All right, man. Listen, get after it today. You got some stores to get to, bud. Yeah, well, shoot. Yeah, I got actually uh Dimitri. Dimitri, her orientation is today. Nice. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yep. So I'm about to get ready to head out there to Dimitri Orientation. <laughs> That's cool, man. Awesome. Yeah. Well, keep me posted if you need anything. All right. Okay. I appreciate you, Chris. Thanks, man. Talk to you soon. Yeah, man. All right. All right, bud. Thanks, bye.